Hello, my old school soul food family. Chef Jeffrey back with another video. All right, y'all, like I told y'all, I don't do hams on Easter, y'all. I'm non-traditional here. I'm gonna show y'all what I got here and why I'm doing roast brisket. It's not even outside on the barbecue pit, y'all. I'm gonna show y'all the easiest way to make brisket inside your house. It ain't gonna be called brisket, it's gonna be uh, smothered brisket. Matter of fact, I'm gonna smother this and I'm gonna show y'all the process later on. But I'm gonna tell y'all what's going on here in the state of Texas. And matter of fact, in the cage, we got briskets on sale right now, $1.84 a pound. One brisket usually costs you $65, 70 dollars for one brisket. Now they're averaging about $22 to $25. And you can limit two. So I bought four over the last two days because I put three in my freezer because I got an event coming up on the 23rd of May that I feed everybody, my former co-workers and neighbors and friends at the park in Katy, absolutely free. All they got to do is bring side items. Something I started about, it was about five, six years ago. I call it Jeffrey's uh, Barbecue at the Lake at the park. So that's something I started, so it'll be May 23rd. So I got to stock up on my briskets while they can. So I got four of them already. I might go get a couple of more and put it in my freezer. I got room for two more. But look, look at this brisket. It cost me 25 bucks. So what I'm going to do, y'all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some Worcestershire sauce on here on both sides. I already washed it down. And I got a big old pan in here. I'm going to show you here in a second. Let me get this Worcestershire on here. But like I say, y'all, a lot of, like I say, majority of people that watch my channel are ladies. And a lot of ladies, I'm not saying that, but be rude, but a lot of ladies not going to get out on the pit and do all this barbecuing or whatever. Especially older ladies, most of them going to cook in the oven. And this is going to be a simple way, like my mom would do it, to put it in the oven. But let me show y'all here something, what I got here. Let me right over here in the sink for a second. I got a pan here with a rack on the bottom. When I cook this in, I'm going to have the, the brisket is not going to be sitting in the liquid. It's going to be sitting up off the liquid. You can get a pan. I mean, this is a duster pan. I've had this thing about, ooh, it would be 15 years. I only use it for this type of cooking. So, put this back in here. I'm going to do the, I like to do the fat side up at the end. So, I got some, uh, this is the Uncle Steve's. Uncle Steve shakes. This is his competition cow powder, which is awesome for brisket. Anything beef based, always use this. It's awesome piece of a uh, piece of equipment. It's awesome uh, seasoning. So I season one side. And I'm gonna put it here and put some up under this flap here. And I'm going to put it on this side. And what I'm going to do, y'all, I'm going to put this in the oven for 30 minutes at 450 degrees. I'm not going to even cover it because I want to get a nice sear on it. And when I come back from that, after that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some onions on there. And I'm going to put some liquid in the bottom of this pan. And I'm going to cover it up. And, and we're going to uh, cook it for about th four to five hours at 350 degrees. That's easier than cooking outside 12 and 15 hours outside. You can do it inside for five hours. I'm going to show you all the process. So I'm going to step off. I'm just stick it in the, this pan, the brisket oven, just like this, for 30 minutes, 450 degrees. And then when you come back, I'll show you the next process. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, we are back. Now, like I said, I wanted to get a nice sear. See that nice sear I got on that, uh, that um, brisket? Now, this is what we're gonna really fix it up, y'all. I'm gonna put some garlic on here. We're gonna put some onions on here. Let me get a big spoon here. Put some garlic on this thing. Okay, y'all, we're gonna fix this thing. Gonna be good, 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 good. A lot of garlic. This thing gonna totally be just cooking its juices, not in its juices, but in the uh, pan for the next four to five hours. Put onions on there. Mm-hmm. Put me some more Worcestershire on here. Like I told y'all, this is the easiest way for y'all to uh, cook brisket. My mama used to do this all the time. She, of course, she wasn't the best barbecue outside. 
So she did inside. And I'm gonna tell you, show y'all how later on. I'm gonna take the juices off of here and we're gonna make a gravy with this. Oh my god, y'all. This is gonna be goodness. And I'm gonna show y'all how to cut it with some mashed potatoes. I'm telling y'all. It don't get no better, y'all. Don't get no better than them. So we pour this thing in water. We'll fill up pretty much like maybe three quarters of the way. Not even three quarters away, maybe. Halfway up. And that's why I got it a rack in here because I really don't want it to sit in the juices and stick to the bottom of the pan. So I use a rack to uh to let it elevate out of side out of this. There we go there. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Now I got it covering the rack. Y'all can see that. Y'all can see that. Now what I'm gonna do. I'm going to cover it with foil. Make sure I completely seal it. Okay, it's going to be kind of hot, y'all. Put foil. Completely seal this thing, y'all. Now, about three hours, two and a half, three hours into the process, I'm going to check the liquid in here. It shouldn't need any more because brisket has a lot of liquid in itself. That fat in, in, in that's on there, it's going to render, and it's going to create a lot of liquid, too. So I really don't need a lot, but I like to kind of check it just in case after two and a half hours to make sure it's not going dry because I want a lot of liquid in there because that liquid I'm going to use to make my gravy out of. It's going to be the flavored, seasoned liquid that come out of there. So anyway, y'all. I'm going to be back in about, if I need to add some more water to this, I'm going to show y'all. I'll come back home. If not, I'll show y'all when it's a finished product. This is one of the things you can do, like I say, y'all, on a Saturday night. And actually, if you're really good at it, you can put it in the oven. Like maybe you go to bed about, well, if you go, most people go to bed 8, 9, 10 o'clock, maybe 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. Set your alarm at 3 o'clock. Get up and take it out the oven, and then after church on Sunday, all you gotta do is take the juices out of, make the gravy, have all your sides ready, and it's good to go. But tomorrow, which is Easter Sunday, my brisk is ready. My meal gonna be completely ready. I'm gonna make a couple of buttermilk pies later. I got this mashed potatoes, a couple of vegetables. I got the pineapple cake already. Everything's good to go for Easter Sunday for me. Like I say, it's not traditional Easter Sunday for me. And my neighbors and stuff and parents and relatives did I eat ham and all that no ham is not a let me tell you something about ham i'm gonna i'm gonna call you out kendall Middleton. i'm gonna agree with you and he'll agree with me i don't like those spiral cut hams a little i like a ham the old country ham got that big fat on it the really fat cap on it the, it's not cut it's not spiral and you put it in the oven you roast it for about two three hours that's the kind of ham i like and I like that at Christmas time during the holidays. I'm just not a big ham eater. Not, we didn't grow up eating ham for Easter. It's not a big thing growing up. We ate regular traditional meat. So just like I said, Kenneth know what I'm talking about. He followed me on uh, YouTube. He comments a lot. Good guy. Uh, he always comment that on the lives that the ham, you got to have that fat on there because ham will dry out on you. If you don't have that fat, it's very important. So anyway, y'all, I'll be back here in about three to, three to four hours and show you the finished product. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, we are back. All right, y'all, we are three hours into the cooking process, and I wanna show y'all kind of what this is doing. Gotta be very careful when you open this up because you know it's gonna be going to steam you. I just wanna show y'all here really what I'm looking at. I know it's not ready, but this takes about four to five hours to cook the way I'm cooking it. I just want to kind of show y'all the process right now. See that? Look at that goodness right there. And see all this, uh, all that juice right there? See all that? That's nothing but gravy. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put that, pour that in a pot later when it's ready. And I'm going to skim the grease off the top. And we're going to make our gravy with that. The way I test it here, I can tell this thing is still, still pretty much firm. It's got a beast because this part is almost ready. But this part here, the hardest part of the brisket, it's got about at least an hour and a half, two hours to go, y'all. So, halfway into the cooking process, 
but you can see how good that is. Them onions on there, that garlic, and this here, like I say, this uh, juice here, that's nothing but flavor for that nice gravy that I'm gonna make for Easter. And let me show you what else I've been working on over here, y'all. I got me a couple of buttermilk pies there, stretch out the oven. Got this one, they still hot. I just took them out the oven. A couple of buttermilk pies I made. I love buttermilk pies for Easter. Of course, I got my, my uh, I'm making mashed potatoes and corn to go with it. And uh, yeah, y'all. So this is gonna be my tradition of Easter. And I got eggs, uh, some, uh, some, uh, devil eggs. I did a recipe, I did a video for that before. And, uh, and something else we got on there. So yeah, it's gonna be, this here brisket corn, it'd be 25, 30 people. So I'm feeding the neighborhood tomorrow, y'all. <laughs> And you see one of them pies gonna travel and one I put in my regular thing, but it's gonna stay here. But whoever will need Easter meal tomorrow afternoon, they know to just knock on the door, ring the doorbell. I'm gonna have plenty, plenty of food for them for the holidays. So anyway, y'all, I'll be back. When I come back again, this thing will be completely ready. And I'm gonna show you the process. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the, lift the whole brisket out of there and put it in another pan. And I'm gonna take the, juice like I say and put it in a pot and I'm gonna let it sit there a little until the grease float to the top then I'm gonna skim all that grease off the top you know brisk got a lot of fat on it I'm gonna skim all that grease off the top and all that flavor at the bottom I'm gonna tighten it with a little roux and make my gravy with that then we're gonna slice a little brisket off and have me some mashed potatoes and corn already ready and I'm gonna show you a plate of it I'm telling you it's nothing like braised brisket y'all i love barbecue brisket don't get me wrong that's the best way to eat it but sometimes you just gotta stick it in a big pan and stick it in the oven for four or five hours and just let it slow cook it's nothing better so anyway y'all we'll be right back all right y'all the brisket should be ready it's been five hours in the oven and let's see what we got here y'all let's see what we have here Oh yeah, oh yes, I can tell y'all haven't even touched it yet and I know it should be ready. See that jiggle, look at that. See that, you can just jiggle it. When you can jiggle it like that, y'all, you know it's ready. When it got that little jiggle, anybody been cooking brisket for a long time, either if you barbecuing it outside or in the oven, you know when it's ready. I can just tell by the jiggle. When it got that little jiggy, I can say when you get jiggy with it, it is definitely ready. So I'm gonna let this rest just a second, y'all. I'm gonna take this out. I got a platter here. See my, see my big platter? And I'm gonna put this brisket on this platter. Uh, then I'm gonna drain this, uh, all this juice in here. Like I said, I got a pot over here to the left here. I'm gonna drain in that and then we're gonna come back and make the gravy. So I'll be right back when I drain the liquid and we'll get on the process of making the gravy. But just check this out here before y'all leave here. This is just goodness. Like I gotta tell y'all, y'all can cook this brisket inside. This thing is nice and flavorful, just tender. Man, don't get no better than this. And all the flavors, you know, is instilled in there. Nothing escaped, that's why I completely sealed it with the foil. So yeah, that's good roast beef right there, y'all. So anyway, y'all, we'll be right back. Okay, y'all, we are back here. Like I say, y'all, look at this nice goodness here. Look at that. See that? And like I say, if you can shake that brisket, I ain't have to test it or nothing. I just know when you shake a brisket and it wobbles like that, the thing is so tender. So these onions on top, I'm going to put in my gravy. After I get my gravy done, you'll see I'm going to take these onions off of here and I'm going to put in my gravy. But let me move you over to the juice that I took out of there. See all that juice right there? Now what I need to do is grease on top. I don't want that grease in my gravy. So I let it set in the pot about 10 minutes so the grease can kind of, you know, rise to the top. And this is what I'm gonna do. I got a little bowl here. And what I do is just go to the top. You see that oil? That's oil there. I just kind of skim that oil off the top as much as I can. Of course, I can't get every bit of it, but as much as I can off the top, but I don't want that grease in my gravy. See that? It's kind of latest ladle on top. I got a fly in my kitchen, y'all. It's getting that time of the year. When I have flies in my kitchen, y'all. 
See all that grease? You do not want that grease in your gravy, y'all. I'll try to strain as much of it off as you can. And you can pretty much tell. I guess, I guess I know by experience when I got it pretty much all the way off. And this is hot. So you get it in here. But you know brisket has a lot of, a lot of grease. So you want to skim as much as you can off, y'all. As much as you can off of there. Okay, let me move it around here and see what we got. Oh, yeah. Now, see all this nice? It's all, look at all that flavor, y'all. That's all flavor. Now, I'm going to turn my pot on. I'm going to let this come to a boil. See all that? I ain't got to make no, uh, be, you have to, I didn't even put beef stock. That's why I tell people, quit buying gravy in the store. The baby pack, especially when you make roast and stuff, this your gravy right here. You just use all, and this is so flavorful, y'all. You just don't know how flavorful. Let me taste it. I know I ain't got to add no salt and pepper to it, probably. Let me taste it here. A little bit. Maybe a little bit of salt and pepper. Other than that, uh-uh. It got all the nice garlic taste in there and the seasoning from the, uh, from the rub I put on there. Absolutely amazing. So anyway, y'all, I'm going to get my room. Come back, and we're going to put this gravy together. We're going to put this whole plate together. We'll be right back. Uh, old school Sunday menu idea segment on Easter Sunday, y'all. Almost finished. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, my stock here from my rope and my brisket is ready. Now, I got a little roux here. And all I'm going to do, y'all, I'm going to tighten this up. Make some gravy right here, right in front of you. Y'all know roux, all roux is is 50% melted butter, 50% flour. That's all it is. That's what I use to thicken up my gravies and stuff sometimes. I'm hoping I got enough. I only heat it. I make a big batch at a time. But I'm hoping I got enough right here. I don't have to heat up anymore. I don't want to make it too thick, this gravy, and I don't want to make it too thin. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have enough, y'all. See how it's coming together? See how it's coming together there? A little bit more there. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that, y'all. A little bit more out of get the rest of it out of here. Oh yeah, look at that. Like I said, I don't want to make it too thick because what it is, as this gravy sets up, and y'all know it's going to thicken overnight it sets up. And when I'm really going to be using this for tomorrow, so I don't want to make it too thick. I just want a nice thin gravy here. Now I'm going to season it with some salt and pepper. All that pepper here. Put some black pepper in there. You know, I put a little black pepper in my gravy. You know that. And a little bit more salt. Maybe one teaspoon of salt. Now I'm going to let this cook just a little bit more. It's going to thicken a little bit more and we'll be back. And I'm going to cut this brisket. And I'm going to add the onions to it. And then we'll cut the brisket. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, we are back here. Okay, now this is as thick as I want it. Let me give y'all a little uh, advice here. When you're making gravy, especially if you're making gravy for the next day or something like that, do not make it too thick because what's going to happen, you see the consistency of this gravy is all I want. The next day, the, as this thing set up overnight or set in the refrigerator, it's going to get really, really thicker. And then when you warm it up, you're going to have to add water to it and all that, just really defeating the purpose of the gravy consistency let me show y'all here this is the consistency i want right there i don't want it no thicker than that because i know i'm gonna use it tomorrow and tomorrow it's gonna be thicker so now i'm gonna add remember them onions i told you i had we can add them back in here let me put them on my pack put them on a bowl here take them off of here while y'all watch that go got a little oil and onions and garlic i'm gonna take off of here and I'm gonna just throw it right in that gravy, y'all. It ain't gonna hurt it. 
It ain't gonna hurt it at all, y'all. Oh, y'all, I'm picking it off here. Getting me out of my can off of there, okay. See these onions here that I had and the garlic? Throw it in there too. Throw it on in there. See that? Look at that. I ain't gonna do nothing but help that gravy. Look at that, see that? Now I'm gonna turn it off. Good homemade gravy, y'all. Right, all the drippings off that beef. You got a big pot, and I'm gonna have an extra left over. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna freeze this. I'm gonna get it cool, and I'm gonna put in my, cool it down later, probably the next couple of days, and put in my food saver bag. And that's gonna be my uh, gravy when I need it. I already got some. So, step out one more time, y'all. I'm gonna come back. Let me show y'all right quick. I'm gonna slice a little bit of this. Just brisket right quick, just to show y'all. And I'm about to make me a plate, and I'm gonna show you how good it is. Let me move back over here. Let me show y'all here something. Let me tell you how to. Uh, how tender this brisket is. Let me just tell how tender it is. I'm gonna take home and slice it up. I'm slice a little thin piece here and show y'all. Let me show y'all here. You just see how ten, see how tender that is, y'all. Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. Flavorful. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna step off here. I'm gonna make an actual plate, and we're gonna see how good all this tastes together for Easter Easter dinner. So we'll be right back, y'all. All right, y'all. We are back. We are back. We are back here. Look at this. Would you eat this for Easter dinner? Look at that. Nice tender brisket, mashed potatoes, nice natural gravy. Got me some corn. This is my dream plate right here, y'all. And I'm gonna show you how tender this brisket is. I'm telling you. I got a fly in my kitchen. About to drive me nuts. Oh my God. Hold on, y'all. Be right back. All right, y'all. We back. Yeah, I think I got got him got taken care of. But look at this, y'all. Let me show y'all here. How tender this is. Look at that. You don't even need it. You don't need a you don't need a knife for this, y'all. See how they just falling apart tender? The mashed potatoes on there, little corn. Look at that. Look at that bite right there. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Everything is purposely seasoned. Let me show you again on this brisket. Yeah. Falling apart. Don't need no knife. That's what happens when you roast it slow in the oven. Four and a half, five hours. That's what you get. Instead of 12 hours outside on the barbecue pit. Let me one more bite, huh? Mm. That's an Easter meal put you to sleep right there, y'all. It'll put you to sleep. But anyway, I want to wish everybody a happy Easter. If you're watching this video on Easter, instead of sitting it with your family, I guess I consider it an honor, but I hope most of y'all just spend it with your family and friends and and celebrating the resurrection of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I think, for every day. So, anyway, if you like this video, please share, please comment, please subscribe, please follow my other social media accounts, Facebook, Insta Tw Instagram, Twitter, Twitch TV, Pinterest, and OldSchoolSoulFood.com. Remember the hashtag 2022. Helping others with a purpose, old school soul food. Until next time, have a blessed old school soul food day, and I will see y'all in the next video. Love y'all. Y'all have a happy Easter. Love y'all. Bye.